Another day on the road. America's a real pretty lady when you're off the interstate, I tell you what. The road is one giant smile, and I'm just driving through the space between its teeth. And there's not much I know about Georgia other than a lot of people make money shrimping because there's a lot of shrimp there, and they're especially tasty. I'm on my way to meet one shrimper who's doing things a little differently. Actually, a lot differently. He's catching jellyfish off the coast of Darien, Georgia, a sleepy little fishing village of less than 2,000 people. I believe this is the smallest town I've ever been in. Even the horses are small. Good thing there's not too much going on here because jellyfishing starts early, really early. Morning. Morning, morning. How will boom? Justin Warner, how are you? We gonna cook today? Yeah, dude, let's do it. Guess we gotta catch something first, huh? We better. Yeah. Let's go. Hal Boone is a fourth generation shrimper who switched to jellies because of the huge demand for them in Asia where they're considered a delicacy. Selling for as much as $15 a pound. Today should be just clean jelly balls. I haven't really been on a boat, well, probably ever, I guess. We got a scuttle hole that we can put our foot in. So what exactly is scuttling? A scuttle hole? Yeah. I don't know. I just heard it all my life. I couldn't tell you. Watch the rope. This is like a video game. Uh, it's four in the morning, and we're going to go hunt jelly balls, a.k.a. jellyfish. I still haven't gotten a clear answer on what the difference between jelly ball and jellyfish is, but we're just going to refer to ourselves as ballers from here on out. Jellyfishing starts early because the boat has to go out at high tide. This is like the Millennium Falcon. Are you familiar with the Millennium Falcon? No. Uh, it's a famous spaceship. I'll be 55 tomorrow. Yeah? So... Well, happy birthday. Should I know about this Falcon thing? No, no, it's okay. okay. It's just from a movie. All I know is work. From 12 years old, I was on these boats well before 12. At 12, I was getting a full man's pay. Howell isn't just a serious guy. He's a serious innovator. The first in his family to shift from shrimp to jellyfish. Jellyfish can be way more money than shrimping, so I'll just keep catching the, the jellyfish. Even though we're only getting seven cents a pound at uh, over $6,000 for, for this boat. Yeah. It's good money. Can you see day breaking? Oh, man, it's beautiful. It's time to rock and roll. <laughs> Looks like we found a few. So, I mean, it's a misconception that all jellyfish sting. They're kind of fun. They feel like stress relievers. I guess they are a little slimy. To make the day profitable, Howell and his crew must haul in at least 90,000 pounds of jelly balls. So, how? why is it only jellyfish? Well, how is it so clean? We're using eight inch webbing. Okay. Everything swims through. Nice. Or, or out runs the net. Now, that's bigger. Yeah, that is a huge sack of jelly balls. How many pounds is that? Uh, 2,000. Yeah, that's a ton right there. Yeah. Hal's disappointed. 2,000 pounds is nowhere close to the capacity of the 10,000 pound nets. It's only enough to, like, crush a human. It's only the weight of a car. What else? Our mission is to catch strictly the cannonball jellyfish, but some other sea creatures sneak on board too. The creepiest thing is when you're standing right here and you feel something touch your foot, and it's this. My primary job is to snatch all the stowaways and toss them back. Just trying to stop them from going in the hole. My old friend Ray, you gotta stick your fingers up inside of them. They don't stay together too well, huh? I scuttle them. He shoots, and he scores! Thank you! <laughs> yeah. Huh? What? Do not test that. It's made slippery. You notice I didn't fall, though. <laughs> Waiter. Woo, he about busted his butt. Not everything goes overboard. I save the good stuff for an impromptu sushi lunch. Those anchovies, I'm gonna eat those raw. Get those scales off there. Put this sucker on a pizza. You'd like me to cook that for you? No, man. Mm. That's great. For dessert, 
fresh Georgia white shrimp. He's gonna eat it raw. At a sushi bar? You know, this would probably be like $3. Mm. Yeah, dude. It's like a salted marshmallow. Good yeah. Job. Salted Good marshmallow. Job. I'd be yeah, heaving like right now. You'd be heaving it now? I'd be heaving, yeah. I'd be more than happy to eat a jellyfish right now, too. But they require processing. On shore, they're immediately sliced into ribbons and salted for preservation. This part, this part's called the umbrella. Umbrella is mostly eaten in Japan. Well, that's all they eat there. In China, they eat all of it. It'll be a three million dollar industry. Wow! Right here. Whoa! That's here a in lot. Darien. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's great. Yeah, here in the little town that don't even have a red light. For all the jellyfishing in these parts, the consumption is basically zero. But throughout Asia, they're a staple in dishes like jellyfish salad. If you looked up all the good things that's in the jellyfish, oh, yeah. it would amaze you. If you could, you'd eat a little bit of jellyfish every day because it would be like a vitamin. Howell believes in the future of jellyfishing. Today's catch has been coming up light so far. So this is the final haul of the day. Just hearing that thing stretch. Look at that. Look at this. How much? There's a 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds. Five tons. Show me the mud. This is what you wanted to see. Oh, my God. Look at how huge it is. Solid jellies. That's the mother load, man. It's basically a massive hunk of collagen. Whoa! Ballin'! We got him! 